What is up, YouTube? You know what I just thought of? What's that? Just as I clicked the timer, I was like, oh, crap. I should have had just you come back on <laughs> and not me or the, the you know iPad cam or anything. And then it would be like, you could have been like, hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I would have freaked everyone out. Fooled you. Fooled you. What's up, folks? Hey, Bob. Hey, uh, who's here? Bob, Andrew, more Andrew, more Bob, some Sergio. And then there's Chris. There's me. There's a non-fam. So what's up? What's everyone up to? Chris sent me this new high-tech Natva. That is its name, Natva Prusia. It's an That's original it. Natva Prusia. <laughs> that box, the box and the foam inside cost more than the printer. Probably does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you get my email on the last like message before you box it up, or was it already too late? Or did you? Uh, I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look. The, the extra screws and stuff. Oh, yeah. We were talking about lead screws. Uh, I did yeah. not. Right. I, I, I have a pile of them that I still need to go through. If I find some that you can use, though, I will uh, ship them over to you. Well, you know what I was thinking? It was the last minute after you asked me if there's anything else I needed. Is, uh, you know those clamps where you got two of them and you go like this and they wind up? Mm -hmm. Those are perfect for that bent or not. Who cares if they're bent on those? Right. right. And I want to make some out of some of the scrap wood on them you know cnc of course <laughs> sure. i've got the cnc going now that I, I gotta play with it it's kind of overrun everything lately anyway box big box chris sent me a big box of yep. so, <laughs> yep. so everybody in the chat don't get your hopes up that this is going to be good uh, this, i t tell you right now see see that big area there we can actually see the floor yeah, yeah, if that, that box is full of all the stuff that made it so you couldn't see the floor, right? It, you yeah. can actually see the floor, so you know I've given some stuff away. Yeah, uh, that's the tenth box of parts that I parts slash printers that I've sent out in two months. So I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, it's time for you to clear out some of the old stuff, huh? Yeah. You know, if you ever want to get rid of that uh, um, Folger Tech uh, SE, whatever that big one, you know, the big one. Yeah, I, I know you're having problems with it. And it's, yeah, it, yeah it, that's it, what I wouldn't. I'll make space for that big monstrosity. It's it's been quite the challenge, that's for sure. Although I really don't have the space for it, I'd probably get it and just take this and mount it on that frame. <laughs> well, the nice thing about FT6 though is you just put a piece of wood over the top and then you stack a couple more printers and you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. and you got a table even if you're not using it. Yeah. It, I stacked up on all you're using. Is that it right over there on the side? <laughs> it's actually over there, but it does have a printer and a box on it. So <laughs> That's pretty sad. <laughs> anyway, everybody else is streaming tonight, too, which I didn't know. Um, but, oh, well. This was a last-minute thing. Chris said, I have, like, an hour tonight. You want to do it? I'm like, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I could be here. Yeah, that's right. Sergio sent me a box of all the stuff he didn't want, uh, like, two years ago. Oh, so there's a stuff bunch of stuff from Sergio in here. <laughs> no, which, if I would have thought about it, I would have totally done that because I, th I think I still have the box over there somewhere. I don't know. I, I, I just the way you put. I know you put not uh, but the way you like veed it, it makes it look like a name like Notva. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm gonna name the printer in there. It's gonna it's be the Notva Prusa. <laughs> uh, light speed. Yeah, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to try and cut it so we can go watch yours there, light speed. This was kind of a uh, last minute thing, like I was just saying with Chris. He's like, let's do it tonight. I got time. I was like, okay. <laughs> I don't care. I have all the time in the world. So I suppose we could get to it, huh? Sure. You know, all those knives I made for all you guys and passed out. Oh, maybe I do have a knife here. If I look in these here, I do have a couple of knives here. I have one. Didn't say I didn't have one up here, but I do. So is this thing actually pointing at it? Yes, it is, sort of. Here, we'll get a little more of it. Now, now we get to see how much stuff is broken 
by uh, the UPS man. It actually, well, I gotta say, my UPS guy is really good here. Um, I have an advantage because he's my cousin's father-in-law, so he kind of takes, you know, like extra. You know, he also, you know, like he'll email me and be like, "Dude, um, I'm gonna be a little late," or "Hey, you know, I'm I'm closer. <laughs> Are you home? Do you want me to stop by earlier?" You know. Uh, so, so he doesn't just, you know, get 10 foot from your door and chuck it like mine does? No. <laughs> he'll actually, uh, he'll, he'll actually, like, put it in my garage if it's raining and I'm not home. Because, nice. you know, I knew him before he even married, or his son married my cousin. Right. So those filament samples, I have no idea what they are. I just grabbed a big handful and tossed them in the top. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. And ow, my eyeballs. <laughs> retina burning oh, coaster. This retina burn. And I know that's retina burning orange because it's hurting it my is. eyeballs. It is. Yeah, it, it, even, just, it even distorts the camera when you hold it up. I, I was going to say, it just totally blows out the freaking red. It's so. <laughs> I got to get a black light because this is fluorescent, isn't it? Doesn't it like glow under black light? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it does, because I know the, uh, I got some, I finally, good catch, I finally got some uh, um, fluorescent brown. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is, there you go, sampled, and the most important part, all right, we're doing unboxing, that's all I needed right there was a sticker. Thank you. Done, got the stickers out. And we got some paper. There's a lot of paper in there. And some more paper on oh, another sticker. Woohoo! That way, if you build a printer, you can have one for each side. Um, somebody else did. Oh, Monkey just sent me some of your stickers. I've been harassing him. I don't know if you've seen Mad Monkey stickers. He's got the dancing monkey with the one leg. Um, I don't think I had. I, ha I had like the. I think I stuck him on stuff already. He had like a round one. Well, that's his keychain. Which is the old logo. Yeah, yeah. I got a sticker that looks like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Alien did some as a joke when he first got his leg hacked. Uh, you know, and he, we all made sure like he was okay with it. But uh, <laughs> it's a monkey with a pirate hat and the peg leg and everything. And he's like dancing. Nice. And uh, they had a whole bunch made up. But then, of course... I was like, "Monkey, send me some." And he's like, "All right." And then pandemic hit and crap happened, and yeah. I didn't get it until like two weeks ago. <laughs> Just in three D. How's it going? Oh, look, more paper. Oh, this is real filament. This is some IC three D. You know, that's perfect timing because I don't have any white left. Oh, nice. I literally burned off my last bit of white doing some test prints for some, you know, CMC stuff. <laughs> Those were literally the perfect. Day. And I yeah. like IC3D. I got to buy some IC3D. Yeah. They have uh, more than supported the community. Uh oh. We have Big Tree Tech boxes, which for some reason I don't think they actually have Big Tree Tech boards in there. Do they, they do. They're probably oh, they brand do. new. Yeah. Uh, they're both mini boards, but both both types. So one with replaceables and one with and one with twenty two oh nines. So I didn't know how you were doing for boards. They're not, you know, the most, you know, they don't have the most features in the world, but you could use them on something. You know, it's funny. I actually have two extra boards right now. Oh, nice. But that's all right. Because, and I can use them to swap somebody else for something else. Well, I'm, I'm assuming does this still have the original board on it? Yeah, it does, and it works. No, no, it won't. <laughs> Because that's something I don't trust. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I will go out and buy a big lighter all on my own if I want one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have a power supply that. Still yeah, it's, it's gonna have to come out like all one piece. That's the actual original power supply, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, you got this thing really jammed in here. <laughs> oh, 
more filament. And we got a little. Oh, those are nice shirts, dude. Sweetness. <laughs> For one, I can't afford their stuff. And I could tell just by touching it. I've been hearing these are like the nicest t shirts ever. Very nice. And just by like petting it, I can tell it is. These things are awesome. I got to find out where they're getting them from. Yeah, yeah, I had an extra one. It was just sitting down there, and I'm like, man, Tom, Tom needs one of these, so I just tossed it in. I definitely need one of these, and that should be big enough, even. Well, awesome, dude! Thanks, man. <laughs> You're welcome. I think I think that's more that's more exciting to me than than the printer. Well, is. <laughs> I kind of figured I kind of figured actually the shirt and the fill would probably be better than the printer was going to be. So. Okay. Um, I'm not sure I can get this out. <laughs> this is stuck on now. I'm not sure how I got it in there, so. I'm really not sure either, because you definitely got it jammed in here. <laughs> Might have to just dump the whole thing. It won't hurt it any. Well, the good thing is, is pretty much anything I do to it, <laughs> I can fix. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's it's a pretty simple machine. It's a couple of extrusions <laughs> and like four motors. So there it is, folks. <laughs> Best printer you've ever owned, right there. <laughs> All right, let's finish ripping that out of here. And what I'll do is put it back on there. Okay. Is this one of your CDs? Uh, yeah. Yep. From a long time ago. So you can't get rid of them, so you're pawning it off on me? Right. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got in here. So as you can tell, oops, I just ran over a sample. Xyltech. I really have no idea what's in there. I think it's just standard stuff. You probably have a bunch of it already. <laughs> Gee, I got a Benchy from Chris Riley. Hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I realized the other day that I'm never like 10 feet away from one, ever. If you, oh, watch, yeah. if you watch that contest video, that oh, there you go. There's a blast from the past. The, there's, that's probably the last one in existence, actually. I really wish you guys would do like a reunion tour. Yeah. I talked to Walter the other day on the phone, and he's like, man, we should do fun of the country basement. People would lose their minds. <laughs> I'm you, like, you guys just, like, do it, like, surprise. I mean, Glenn's yeah. still doing it every Sunday, so. Yeah. You you and Walter could just pop in one day and just be like, it was just so much fun. For I mean, Walter is just, it, it, just the three of you were just, like, the perfect. We're, we're quite the mix. It, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting. Um, and you're just sitting there going, shaking your head, going, "What a <laughs> moron!" What now? <laughs> <laughs> and Walter and Glenn are just so good at like, you know, jabbing each other, but in a, you know, I want to say a kind way, but there's nothing kind about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else we got in here? Holy crap! Something heavy. Is this just more parts from that thing? That that's a that's a full set of steppers. Uh, I didn't know if you needed any extra, so there's a bunch of extra. Okay, there's a whole bunch of um. I I, I think something broke. Oh, what is that? A wheel. Oh no, and the motor that it was probably behind it. Um, you, you know what? These single bearing wheels. Yeah. Will be one of the first things I replace. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I was kind of wondering how, how it would fare because, like, all the mounts are acrylic and everything. Oh, so exactly. the whole section broke off because there's no. Uh, wheel. It's all the acrylic crap. Well, you can have fun with that. What the hell is that? Oh, it's a white Chris Riley. But I got like, okay, I got too many Chris Riley. You're, you're fixed up now. Thing. Oh, and a Chris Riley pen. There you wow. go. I didn't know you had pens. I, I do. 
I got a little bit of everything nowadays. But I, I feel special now. Who else has a pen? Nobody else got a pen, do they? <laughs> <laughs> what else? Anything else in here? Oh, another broken wheel. Jeez. That must be off the, the X, like one side of the X. Yeah, I have a feeling I actually broke it taking it out because I heard something crack. Mm, well, it's, you know, it's the best uh, acrylic money can buy. It's got to be the bad one. Uh, Everything else is still here and attached. Oh, no. It's off a X, yes. But there's two there. Well, now you got a CNC. You can just cut all your own parts. Yeah, except for I can't really cut acrylic. I mean, I can. Yeah. I just don't know how. <laughs> and right. I'm no help there. The more I'm reading about it, the more I'm reading that I'd be better off just cutting aluminum because it's actually easier. <laughs> yeah. Are these used? They are, right? Um, I so. <laughs> this sounds awful, but uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and sell you my method on this. So when Big Tree Tech says, hey, we got another new board out, I tell them to send two because I install one and test it, and then I show the other one in the video. Okay. So those are the ones that I just pulled out to show and, and you know point at and show people stuff. So You know, I kind of like this color combination better than the white. The deep red and the black. Yeah. I'd love to know how many of those I've made over the years. I, I think you should make the dude out of white and have like little drips of red coming off his head <laughs> and his hand where he's like getting hurt falling down the stairs. There's an idea. Oh, it's a magnet. Yeah. I can put it on the fridge, actually. Oh, that must be aluminum. Did not know that. So, anyways, um, I gotta make space here. I was gonna say, so you, so you got a bunch of stuff now. Yeah, dude, I have a bunch of stuff. But I appreciate more stuff. Oh, look, another box of freaking filling in. Oh, and it's PLA and it's freaking red. My favoriteest color in the whole wide world. Nice. Actually, it's not. <clears throat> Teal is probably my favorite color, but. Red is very close. Teal? Yeah. Nice. Well, you can't really see it, but my, if you look, my beds are all like a dark teal. And actually, my logo, even though the, the llama is a burgundy, if you look at like any of my screens or anything, the background is like a deep teal. Yeah. Turquoise, whatever you want to call it. I think they're an abruptly aggressive eye painful color combination <laughs> they hurt your eyeballs when they're together oh look steppers you, you know i just got a box from ldo again the other day right <laughs> i probably have about 30 steppers now <laughs> well now i have five less so yeah there was a mini stepper which i do want that uh, oh, these are Tronxy steppers. Yeah, those are all off of some scavenge machine. That is all right. I will always take steppers, and if I don't want them, there's always somebody else that I can pass them on to. Well, that, that's what I figured too. You know, like uh, that—that's kind of the way it is. So if I give somebody something that it, they don't need, then they have something to swap for something they do need. So yeah, I mean. You know, that's what's awesome about, like, I know there's there's been some more recent um, rifts in the community, but it's a general hole still. This is one of the nicer communities. People just like, oh, I got those. You need those? Here you go. You know? Yeah. <laughs> people just yeah. pass stuff around, you know. Oh, I'm done with this. You and know. people give me stuff all the time, and it's crazy. You know, I feel, yeah, well, sometimes, sometimes I feel bad. Well, I mean, like, you know, just people that live local to me. You know, it's like, hey, I, you know, I got some of this. Do you want it? I'm like, uh, if I can use it, I will. But most of the time, I just pass it off to somebody else. I could send you a freaking monster llama poster. <laughs> you seen that thing? 
<laughs> no. Freaking um, Michael Cassell printed it as a joke last year. Yeah. And then sent it to me. Now, I saw it in a picture, and I'm like, that's a big poster. Whoa. But no, this is <laughs> a big poster. <laughs> Uh, wow, that is a big poster, man. There you go. That's the right way. Wow. <laughs> I got no place to put it. I was planning on putting it right here. It's bigger than this freaking wall is. This thing's like five foot square. I actually think I'm going to, when I, because I'm moving the CNC to another bay in my garage, blah, blah, blah. I think I'm going to put it behind the CNC machine on the wall. Because I can't, everyone's like, well, are you going to put shelving there and stuff? And I'm like, no, because anything I put on the shelf behind the CNC machine, I can't get to. Because yep. the CNC machine's in the way. And it's almost exactly the same size as the CNC machine. My CNC machine's five foot square. That, so that poster is the wall, perfect. five foot wide, that's about five and a half foot square. Right on the wall behind it. Very impressive. Let's bring this printer up where people might be able to see it and get a good laugh. There's a whole bunch of wheels all broken off. There's got to be more than one axis broken. Acrylic, baby. High quality stuff. That's right. <laughs> that will all be replaced at some point. But I will get it working with what it what what I can. Now I'm assuming you just did the uh <laughs> um, I'm assuming he did the basic reality thing and just pulled the tower off and stood it off. Yep. I can't get to him. So, if anyone wants to know, why don't you tell them what this thing is, Chris? Yeah, so um, this was so when I got started 3D printing, I had uh, a kit, acrylic kit, like five plus years ago. Another part broke off. Yeah, uh, acrylic crap. It's not an important one. It's fine. Um, so I had an acrylic kit. That was my my base printer, the one I always used. And then I needed to print some stuff that I just couldn't print on my printer, so I ordered a Prusa Mark II. And it took nine weeks to get a Mark II at that time. So while I was waiting, I bought this 3D printer, which was an Anet A2. It's, and if you don't know the A2, it's a whole lot like um, a TiVo Tarantula. It's got like the Z, the Z motors flipped upside down. Uh, no part cooling, Bowden style. It does have some aluminum extrusion, but then pretty much everything else is acrylic. Uh, so, so that is the that that's pretty much what this machine is. They were like 180 bucks or less at the time. They cost almost nothing. Yeah, and I haven't used it Phillips here. screws. It's missing some screws. No, it has Phillips, not like. Oh uh, yes, I yes, it to... does have Phillips screws. Uh, the one thing that's, that is actually kind of interesting, the comp so that plate that is on that bed is stuck down to blue tape, Tom's favorite. And, uh, so you could get it off if you wanted to, but that is a print in Z plates. They don't, they're out of business. I have one. Yeah. Uh, All right, yeah. I had one. I sold so, it with the, uh. Yeah, if you don't know what that is, it's it's like a fiber-based material, and it sticks to stuff like crazy. Uh, so first, that's first actually a pretty good plate. service. It's the first original flex plate. Yes. Yep. It had copper inside it, the whole nine yards. Let me just drop the screw. Driver. Trying to hold it up. I don't know why. <laughs> and screw this into place. Without my glasses on, and I'm assuming this is a spin in, and it sort of is. 
And I should probably put my glasses on so I can see what the hell I'm doing. But what fun is that? Yeah, well, I mean, that takes the guesswork out of things. Why do I want to see? Life is all about mystery. Yeah, let's put them on because something ain't working. I have a feeling the things just didn't spin. Oh, yeah. Hardware's awful. I, I, I do like to see that you're using the Milwaukee multi-tool. I've got like five of those. I love them. Dude, have you used the mini ones? No, but I'd love to have one if that exists. Because this is a ratchety one, too. Yeah. But you got some of these and some not ratchet, right? Yeah, I got one of those, and then I got two of the ones that don't. The mini ratchet ones are so awesome. For just this, I wish I had it. It's in the garage right now. Because, like, yep. the That's mini the one, you problem. and you set it in there, and you spin it. The other thing I have, which is almost as good, are these freaking things. Which is basically the same thing. And it ratchets and everything. Nice. And these are awesome. And they have the same functionality. Except for it's actually wider and more in a way, even though it's shorter. So it is sort of standing up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming these are just spin ins. I haven't looked. Oh, there it goes. Now it's grabbing. Okay, there it is. Printer built. Done. Done. It works good as good right, right now as it ever has. It's a nice clean break, man. There you go. Bright side of things. I'm assuming that was once an X motor. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it went like right here or something, didn't it? That looks like the break right there. Oh, no. It, did it go off the end of it all the way to hell out here? Yes, I believe it does. Holy extend of motion. I wonder if you can just glue acrylic back together just for the fun of it. <laughs> just, just hold it in the clamp and heat it up and see what happens. <laughs> you know, I just might try it. Uh -huh. This is going to be a... Uh, I'm not sure which is that's got to be the front because the screen's there. <laughs> yeah, that's the front. I was thinking this was the front, but the motor's in the way. And where's this actually supposed to mount? Just anywhere? So I modified, I made like, I made the cover for oh, that nice. because it, it was originally it just sat behind the printer, it wasn't connected to anything. Seriously? Yeah, so I, I made it so it would just set so the outlet was facing you in the front. Just yeah, on its end, like that. But then it hits the oh no, I see. It actually goes underneath the it's just all twisted in here. Yeah. There's there's probably a lot better solutions to that. It'd be pretty cool though. I mean, if you could turn it to like, you know, put encase it underneath, even if you did like wood or something. And that's the first thing I thought of is like, you know what, Tom could cut a nice wood frame on a CNC and poured all this stuff over to it. You know, I was I was jokingly looking at my brother the other day and uh, we were talking about some of the exotic woods mm -hmm. and uh, I immediately thought we've had this discussion before that I was going to send you like an Ipe freaking cut, you know, frame. Right, yeah. My neighbor burned it all as firewood. Oh, my. All my freaking Ipe. Oh, man. Because they were like, you know, they have a wood stove, and I have a huge pile of old wood in the backside of the garage. You know, it's all under, like, a tarp. And I'm like, if you need, like, kindling, just grab some, you know. And they burned all of my Ipe, most of my cedar, which, you know. If I hadn't gotten a CNC machine, I would have been like, yay, take more. <laughs> right. Now that I got the CNC machine, I'm like, I don't know if you saw Dan's clock that I made Dan. That came yeah. out fucking fantastic. That came out fantastic. <laughs> um, the one for, uh, I did one for Ripcord and I did one for um, um, 
gym, I did a hot mix one for hot mix, and they're all out of like hundred year old oak. Yeah. Freaking gorgeous. Sweet. But the one from Dan, honestly, is just cheap scrap cedar. They were all like one inch strips. That came out the nicest because they're all like different age and style of cedar. I don't know if you know. There's like ja I use Japanese cedar and American red cedar and American right. white cedar, and you know when you're doing construction, you use all the different. People don't realize cedar isn't cedar. There's like yeah. six or eight different versions of cedar that you can get just anywhere in the United States. So, and a lot of it's actually Japanese cedar, which most people don't even know exists, and it's probably the nicest cedar ever. And it's actually cheaper than American cedar, and it's denser and better. And if you buy a fence now that's got the red cedar on it, yeah. it's more than likely Japanese cedar. Oh, good to know. And it's way better. I mean, it's beautiful stuff. Anyway, it is now 8 o'clock. So this wheel here is broken. Gotcha. These two wheels are broken. <laughs> the X carriage, the one we first thought was the one that was broken, is the only one still in existence. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Does the Y still have all, the, have all the wheels on it? I don't know. Does it? <laughs> I haven't looked under there. It's too scary. Well, I mean, it would be. It, it's probably going to go left to right real easy. It, if it does. looks like it does. Nice. Well, something survived anyway. The uh, motor broke off. I'm assuming this is the X motor. And I'm still not exactly sure where it mounted. It almost looks like it goes there, but then that wouldn't hold the belts. Or does it go over here? I might have a picture of that thing somewhere. I looked at a picture because when you first said, you know, I was, you were like, you want a printer? And I was like, what are you getting me? And you're like, an A9, whatever it is, A12 or A2. I'm like, yeah. I never even heard of it. <laughs> it's old so school, man. Picture. I was like, "Are you freaking kidding me?" <laughs> sure, I'll take that piece of junk. Um, it's got the classic Chris Riley wiring job. Absolutely. Why would it be anything <laughs> different? Um, I do see a tie wrap or two on it, which is above and beyond your normal. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's probably been through like five different versions of wiring. And the old fashioned. Actually, this is the precursor to the uh, reality hot ends. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's a couple of years before that, I would guess. Yeah, well, it's not an actual MK8 because the actual original MK8 just had block that you pin the the um yeah cooling fin thing. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, why can't I think of the word? Um, the heat block? Or the, what? Not the heat block, but the heat the distribution block. Um, the hot block. No, that's your heater down here. I'm talking about up here where the fins are. Oh, heat. your heat sink. Heat sink. That's the word I was looking for. Um, the heat sink is is just a pinned up against the, the aluminum block on the original MKs. Right. Which actually, to this day, is still, believe it or not, one of the better methods. They got a bad rep because of all the cheapo knockoff y five dollar ones you could get on eBay that everyone <laughs> bought and failed miserably. But if you get one of the original, I'm sure you remember like Hick Top. Um oh, yeah. they did it that way. Believe it or not, the old uh, mono prices and the land house, those all had that style MK. They're actually not a bad extruder. <laughs> If you get one of the original, well-made ones, <laughs> yeah, and a lot of those that they—I don't know why they did that—but like originally, uh, they had a decent gear profile, uh, that that a little larger gear that worked pretty mm -hmm. good, and then they went down to this other one that just wouldn't work at all. So you could switch yeah. back and try to try to get some mileage out of it, but you know, and then they started using bad drivers, and they all that just went downhill. Yeah, but the old original MK8 got a bad rep because of kind of like the, the um, V6 did. It started getting a bad rep because everyone was like, oh, my V6 sucks. And it's like, 
well, did you buy it from E3D or did you buy it from? Oh, it was five dollars on eBay. Yeah, no, that was not an original E3D V6. Yeah, but honestly, I've had a couple of E3D V6s. Two, both of them are actually Chinese knockoffs. But the first thing I always do is go out and buy a real E3D heat break, and usually a heat block and heater. Basically, the lower end. So all I'm using is the fin off the cheapie. Yeah, we had a lot of problems with them, even with the original E3D heat breaks. I did have one original E3D one. It was all right. Yeah, the I had better luck with the with the, the old MK8s. Yeah, the the uh, the V6 man. That it if you don't have like a tornado of air on it, then sometimes they can get a little fishy. Yeah, but it's funny because. It got the reputation as you know the fix, yeah, for an a bad MK8. You know, if your MK8 jamming all the time, buy a V6. They don't jam. I'm like, okay. <laughs> all I did was jam. <laughs> yeah, it jammed more. Well, I think it was partially more the extruder. And, you know, again, I was still fairly new, and you know, oh yeah, 25 million millimeters of retractions, awesome. You know, <laughs> The filament out of the nozzle, like yeah, no. <laughs> I remember. I remember when Creality started coming out with that. Well, I mean, they've always done it, but yeah. you know, when the when the tube sets on top of the nozzle, and people were telling me they were using ten and twelve millimeters of retraction, it, I'm like, it, what? <laughs> their stock profile still to this day on their Bowden units is yeah. twelve millimeters of retraction. I don't know. I don't know, man. That must be some sloppy PTFE. I don't. I don't know how they pull it back that far. But whatever. It's PTFE. It doesn't really stick to it. I mean, an all metal hot end. If you pull it back that far, it's gonna stick to it. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, you stick P PLA in a PTFE, it doesn't stick. You stick PETG into a PTFE tube and let it cool down instantly, it'll stick. It, there's, a there's, a really, there's a really interesting mix of how that works. Like, you, well, you know, you've designed things and you put things together. Like, if you get things just right, they don't have to be good. They just have to be together, right? You're yeah. like, this is bad and this is bad, so it worked. <laughs> but if you tried to correct one thing, you'd be screwed. <laughs> yep. Sometimes fixing something, well, I don't have my other T-shirt on. Fix it till it's <laughs> properly broken, man. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's what makes it. I do. I'm good at it. <laughs> Is this smaller than that? Stephen says I should do a basement tour. That's actually uh, next Wednesday. Is the that's what the video is? It's a tour of everything around here. So you just did that like a year or two ago. Uh, to, yeah, I actually uh, two. It was two years ago, so 2019 in June, and, and I I put the link to that video in the new video. It's crazy how much things have changed. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, it's so funny when they when they say like the whole COVID thing hits and the year just kind of disappears. Anything that happened the last year just kind of in my brain. Like you just said it was two years ago and I still to my head it's like, okay, that was last year. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the whole twenty twenty thing didn't exist. Yeah. It's like it's it's a year, but it really but it was just not there. It was just wasted time and the timeline is going around it and we're just going to forget about it. I know <laughs> how you feel, man. I so much stuff. And it's not even deliberate. A lot of times people are like, you know, I'll be thinking about something. It's like, didn't that just happen last year? And they're like, no, that was like two years ago. It's like, oh, well, you know, COVID. So that doesn't count. So it was last year. <laughs> <laughs> the time work, man. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, Kobe got me into 3D printing. I know a lot of people that have started doing stuff and are actually, in, in a way, I mean, nobody's happy, but in a way, happy that COVID hit because, like, there's a buttload of people now that are happy they're working from home, bitched about it when they started, oh, this is obnoxious, and now they're like, I don't want to go back to work. I much prefer working from home. I don't have to drive. I don't have to go anywhere. I can stay in my freaking pajamas and drink eight cups of coffee if I want <laughs> you know, if I don't yeah. want to work and get up and go at eight o'clock in the morning, I'm in home. I can wait and stay in bed until ten and just work until seven tonight if I want. 
You know, my I have two nephews that are big. They're, they're still in college. You got to hear this because they're in your field, actually. Um, well, one of them's not. Um, one of them's a security. They're still in college. They're interns. One of them's making eighty five thousand a year, part time, as an intern. Wow. And the other one's making, he, well, he's a senior. He's actually, I think he's actually done. I think he graduates this, or just graduated. I don't know. Or, no, he's graduating next year. Anyway, he's making like 170000 That's crazy. Part time. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's a big wig security dude. He works for the government. Right. Like when this, he's he's an anti-hacker specialist. When the whole like um, oil pipeline thing happened, yeah, he had, he had to fly down there <laughs> and like investigate. That's what he does. That stuff's always been, been pretty interesting. Uh, I never got, I never really got into it. I don't have the. I don't know the demeanor for that type of thing. I need to stand and look at stuff for a while and, you know, yeah. poke at it and see if it's broken. I, I don't have the, re, like, the the urgency to do things like that. I'm more, a little, lot more laid back about things than some of those guys. Well, are. you kind of do that. Isn't that sort of what you do? I mean, you do a lot of service and repair, right? Even yeah. Like, um, software service and repair. Well, it's like my, my job has become kind of overarching, but um, – the the biggest function of my job is install. Uh, I, oh, I didn't know you did. Yes, yeah, so, so like IBM lands a mainframe and then I go and configure it for the environment. Uh, but which is a huge undertaking because everything you know these these machines have been running since the '60s and they just keep swapping them out, right? So uh, that's the biggest thing that I do. But uh, so they got real the real tapes on them. Oh, uh, yeah, I've I've run into a few. Yeah, they they had a lot more when I first started in the '90s, but. That 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 is sad. Yeah, oh yeah, man. Like in any any state government, there might be a chance that they have a reel to reel drive somewhere. <laughs> you know, if it if it ain't broke. I, it still works sometimes. It still it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It's just my my brother's into that, one of my brothers. Um he, he's big. He used to work at Red Hat, which actually you're part of now, right? In in, in, in some aspects, yeah. I mean, yeah, Red Hat. Yeah, like, you know. Anyway, he just left them a little while ago. Now he actually loved the company, but he hated his supervisor. Anyways, his biggest thing was, um, if like the like the oil pipeline thing or any of these hackings that are happening, why are they happening? These. Yeah. Companies should not have external access to the internet on any of this stuff. Anything that sensitive, you should not be able to sign into from your freaking computer at home. Yeah. You should have to go into the shop and sit at a terminal. Absolutely none of it should have external access or connection to the internet of any kind. There's yep. no need for it. <laughs> And no, we you, don't. You, it, you pull that one little wire out, no more hacking. <laughs> yeah, well, any, anything on the data center floor has no access to the internet. Uh, and I mean, that's how it's been forever for us. But I mean, that's not yeah. for everybody. But um, the the funny thing is, is like you go to these hacker things and they, they tell you about security, or whatever, and you ask, you know, well, how did this happen? And they, well, we did a port sniff on the internet until we found one that was open. <laughs> And then we took that out. <laughs> I mean, they lucked into it, right? I mean, it, it wasn't. And, and then they show you all these slides. Here's the water department of Maryland. Here is the, you know, all the stuff that they found today. Oh, see, that's just, my brother works for uh, um, Rackspace now. Yeah. And he's getting, he's a service tech for him. And he gets this call. And it was some, like, government official going, oh, this isn't working. You know, it's on your server. And my brother literally freaking on the phone said, you dumbass, nothing you have this important should be on any of our freaking servers. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm going to call your boss. <laughs> he goes, 
get your crap off of our servers. Our servers are all accessed through the internet. Anybody can get to them if they know how. These yep. are not, you know, Rackspace is not the most secure place in the world. I mean, it is. Don't get me wrong. It, it's like one of the highest security. It's like trying to hack Apple or IBM or, right. you know, yeah. for all these tech companies, you know, people try and hack Apple and IBM and all of them all, all the time. And nobody ever gets in because they're just like, hello, unplug it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a mess, man. Like RSA, you know, the security firm, they got hacked. You know, like, and they're the guys the that, that sell all our firm. tokens. Yeah, yeah. How are you? How, how, yeah, I don't know, man. My sensitive it, stuff is on a hard drive that I unplug <laughs> unless I'm using it. I mean, I just unplug it. That's all. It's that easy. It, it's if people writing, writing it, down it's passwords and putting it on post-its. I mean, that that's that's what's causing the problem. But yeah. it, that, that's the thing, too. You know, they keep upping the size and the complex of your password. All that does is force you to write it someplace. Yeah. Well, it, again, back when I started on computers, it was when you get your password, memorize your password. Don't write it down. Somebody will see it. They'll steal it. Blah, blah, blah. Now it's like everyone's like, I'll just put it on a post-it. Because right. it's like I just had to today. Because of this new, I'm on a new browser. And to get into StreamYard and to get into Twitter and to get into Facebook again and set them all up again was like 30 freaking steps. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? Here's the code. Enter your passcode. Oh, well, we need a two-part verification. We're going to send you an email. Oh, is this really you? No. Yeah. <laughs> is this a robot? I know, man. It's it's crazy out there. It's like I am not a robot. Like a robot can't be programmed to push that stupid button. <laughs> uh, and to be honest, the whole picture thing, you know, how many have buses in it? Robot can probably figure it out faster than I can. Because <laughs> most of those are so half-assed done that I can't tell what the hell's in them. <laughs> Uh, I actually did do chalk on Slate for a while. We used to program basic on freaking the whiteboard. <laughs> yeah, somebody asked me the other day what program I coded in, and I told them Notepad, and I wasn't lying. Notepad. <laughs> I read a lot of quick code in Notepad and slap it in shell and call it good. Yeah, just copy and paste it. Yep. I do that a lot because I can't. I mean, you, you've seen my tweet stuff. I can't type worth a crap, and my spelling's not very good either. So when I'm doing something like the terminal, I will usually write it in notepad or notebook or, you know, note whatever, read it, <laughs> copy and paste it in there. Because usually in the terminal, when you screw it up, my luck, I you know, go in and reset something. I have no idea what I'm resetting because I hit the wrong L or put the wrong period in the wrong place or yeah. So I right. write everything separate, copy, paste it, and then go. Well, they got everything so locked down on our machines. Of course, they give us Windows machines, right? And they're they're not worth anything. They barely run because there's so much security crap on them. So and you so you can't run Linux shell on the side in your Windows, and then it takes an act of God to log into a Linux server somewhere. So by the time I get through all that red tape, I could have just had it all wrote out and then just quick copy and paste when I finally get in there. And it's just, it, yeah. it, it's that, so hard to get anything done. It, that's understandable in your situation, though. I mean, it yeah. makes sense. The day-to-day -day person, to be honest, the security now is to the point where the only people that can understand it are the hackers. Yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah. It's like I'm more likely to be hacked now because I save everything right on my desktop or there or that, you know. And that's the other problem is I got them all over the place because I can't remember where I saved them last. And I, you know, log into something. And I'm like, I don't remember the password reset. Oh, crap. What did I do that for? Now I got to spend 10 minutes freaking resetting and verifying and double checking and emailing. And it's like, just take my password. And then you get through all of that and it says, 
you've used this password in the last year. Please try again. <laughs> it's like, oh, screw you. Yeah. Good stuff. And I can't even use my classic password, suck my balls. Because I've used that everywhere already. So we do it again. <laughs> All right, thanks. I love that. I, I can't use that password anymore. Because <laughs> I've used it everywhere. Anyway, it is 20 after 8. And we've opened a box of broken parts. We have, we have done it. So, well... Man, I hopefully I didn't just mail you a whole bunch of garbage and you actually get some use out of it. Uh, wow. But uh, I'm interested to see what you actually do with some of those parts there. It, it is a whole bunch of garbage, and I probably will get some use out of it, even if it's just laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> we will have to do another live stream and, I don't know, something. Actually, I'm going to need you again because I was trying to do VS Code again, and I just lost again. <laughs> yeah, just let me know. I had enough problems with Adreno, but at least that was understandable. Yeah. VS Code is just, and it's not the Marlin end of VS Code. It's just platform IO is there, and then it disappears, and then it's not, and then where was it? And then you click on it, and a new window comes up, but it's not the right. What? <laughs> yeah. VS Code, there's too many. There's so much setup and libraries and home directories and garb cash garbage and stuff so yeah let me know man we'll set up something and uh, get it figured out yeah that might be a fun stream you can sit there and laugh at me and go no tom don't do that <laughs> <laughs> don't do that i think um i think it's worse because i'm at a mac and i swear to god microsoft made that not work well on a mac just to be a dick <laughs> I, I wouldn't doubt it at all mm -hmm. so. I mean, they're like, oh, we're going to let the Macs have access to it, but we're going to make it so miserable. They don't want to. They're going to want to go out and buy a PC. Because <laughs> it'll work better. Because it's just so confusing. You know what I found? I can usually make it work if I delete everything on VS Code and I start from scratch and I load it all up. And I, you know, download my brand new Marlin and I load it all up and I just go through and I start editing. The minute I got to go back and edit it, everything's in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Platform IO disappears, something else pops up. Well, it, it doesn't help that you get like five updates for the for C and for Platform IO a week. And, yeah. so, and they always change something. So. And then it's reloading and rebooting and not coding. And I always thought Adreno was hard enough. That's just VS Code's miserable. And it's not even that hard. It's just laid out. Confusing. It's yeah. Little... That's their Swiss Army knife, man. I mean, they, they, they use that to do every language in the free world. So, I mean, there, there's... There's so many extensions and stuff to it. They've tried to port it for everything. So it, it makes it a little more difficult than it should be. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're more difficult than it should be. Yeah. That's pretty much what you use every day, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, I use VS Code constantly. That's kind of yeah. the, that's been kind of the standard. I always used Atom for years. You know, it was kind of the Linux version. Uh, yeah. But, but things just stopped, so they, they stopped being supported and all, it was just, it wasn't worth your while anymore to try to use it. You had to switch to VS Code. Yeah, I can remember when Marlin 2.0 first came out, they were recommending Atom, and it also yeah. was, no, use VS Code. I'm like, why? The Atom I actually got. It was, yeah, right. it was almost like using Adreno was. It was just, it just worked. You fired it yeah. up, loaded it up, you added your stuff to it, boom, it was there. If you quit it and opened it up again, it looked exactly like you left it. Yeah, Adam was like just like a text editor on steroids, basically. I mean, there wasn't, there yeah. wasn't a whole lot to it. But. Well, that's the other thing I've learned to do is I don't even open up VS Code anymore. Like if I'm going to edit something in Marlin, I just edit the actual Marlin file in like BB Edit or something. Yeah. Like a basic text editor. And the next time I open up VS Code to actually compile it, it's all fixed already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. I don't try and do any editing in VS Code anymore. Dude, this thing's a piece of crap. 
It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great, man. I, I, I know. I have faith in you. I know you can do this. The only thing I never, even that thing from the the pumpkin came from Glenn. I yeah. never got that single bearing wheel in the regular T extrusion that these cheap companies are doing. I mean, wow. even Creality said, "No, nah, let's use actual V wheels and you know V extrusion." These yeah. things are like the worst. You can't tension them. Nope. Because they have just like slide it over and tighten the screw. Well, the minute it's twisted even slight, it just slides back over. <laughs> that's I'm guessing that's T slot extrusion. I mean, I'm, I'm that's yeah, probably no, not even V wheel compatible. Nope, it's not. Yeah. Luckily. I still have a buttload of V. Maybe I don't. Well, I got another whole panel right there. Thank you. Same thing. It's all V extrusion. <laughs> Maybe the uh, hodgepodge is going to turn into the A net hodgepodge. <laughs> you know, it's like Voltron, man. You got to got to put them all together to make one. Well, the only bummer is. I bought a whole bunch of the mini wheels. I really like the mini wheels more than the big wheels. People don't yeah. realize when the bearing twists, when you use the mini wheel, I mean, bearing twists, it, it's a fact of life. They're not yeah. perfect. Um, but when the bearing twists, like anything, the farther out you go, the more that little bit of twist gets multiplied. You know, it's like you move this much. If you come out here, it's this much. Right. With the mini wheels, yeah, the bearings aren't as good because they're smaller balls, blah, blah, blah. They wear out faster, but. Come on, they're cheap freaking wheels. Even if they're open builds, they're cheap. Yeah, how good are they going to be, right? There's less play in them. So when you tighten them down, there's very little play. That's why this thing's all mini wheels now. Everything on that is a mini wheel and it's so much tighter because of it. But I put them together, you know how you got to assemble them? And you like take the black wheel, you put the bearing in, and you flip it over, and you put the washer in, and then the other bearing. Right. Guess what I forgot? <laughs> the washer in the middle. Yeah, yeah. And then you tighten the screw up, it just binds. <sighs> that you're not the only one that's done that, though. Uh, I did like ten of them that way without thinking about it. Yep. And I got it all done, and I mounted one up, and I tightened the screw, and it bound up, and I went, like, "I know what I did." Because <laughs> there were all the washers sitting on the desk. <laughs> You just had a lot of spares. Out, they're in there. <laughs> there's, there's no. I mean, you can get them out, but you're gonna damage them getting them out. There's no. Yeah, the the mini one. I bet you those are hard to get out. Yeah, there, there's no way to get it out without damaging it. I mean, yeah, I could probably you know rebuild half of them proper, but and they ain't cheap. I mean, they're still five six bucks a piece. Yeah. So there goes fifty bucks. Don't. <sighs> And it's my own damn fault. Of course, it was one of those. Yeah, I can get this done real quick. Yep. Sure you can, dumbass. <laughs> Brilliant move. Anyway, I, wanna, I will let you go as it's almost 8.30 and I kind of want to go watch uh, um, um, what's his name? Um, do the Taz thing there. Excellent. You gonna go over and watch the Taz? Uh, Probably. I don't know. I I was supposed to talk to uh, Lulzbot and I never got around to it. Mm. Uh, so we'll see how I'm that goes. Good. I guess everyone's getting them on loan, which I always thought they sent it to you and you kept it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I guess they're sending them out on loan, which I mean they're not cheap. Well, it's true. You know, but they're not. I mean, again, people are comparing them to a Perugia. Well, you compare it to a Perugia, it's about the same price when you get right down to it. I mean, it's a little more expensive, but U.S. made, not U.S. made. Yeah, Perugia is way more established and probably a little better in a lot of ways, but. For all my, I, there's things about the Taz's I don't like that are, you know, design choices. They still service all their stuff, you know. They'll answer your questions. You've got a problem, they'll, you know, they'll replace it. Yeah. You know, lots of people that had that. You know, I don't like their <laughs> heads. 
get this little itty bitty bringer and his big, huge extruder. Yeah, and that's always been that way. The, the one thing Lulzbot really ha has to speed up on is like they're still pushing a Lulzbot Cura that's from way back, like yeah. for their ecosystem. They, they got to fix all that stuff at some point. Yeah. Can't even use Cura anymore. Yeah. Cura don't work on the M1 Max. I don't know if you saw uh, um, Brian Vines' post, me and him going back and forth trying to figure it out. The new no. M1 Max won't, the, the, it's, they use an obsolete text, you know, font. Yeah. You, you bring it up and it looks like Chinese, even though it's English. <laughs> oh, I haven't it's seen that one. And it's like one word will be, and then you like click on a button and you're like, oh, I know what that actually means. That means Ultimaker. I want to go custom. And you hit custom and all of a sudden like the whole page will change. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you guys. And they're like, oh, you know, Apple chose this and that. And it's like, yeah, but Prusia's already fully M1. I mean, Prusia's 100% M1 compatible now. But yeah. yay, Prusia is not my favorite slicer, but yay. Idea Maker always has been. I mean, they were M1 compatible before M1 even came out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hell, CraftBot is freaking M1 compatible. <laughs> it is. Craftware is M1 compatible. I mean, come on. If they can do it. <laughs> it's true. I mean, most people don't even know Craftware even exists. When yeah, last you played with Craftware a long time ago. You should try it. Like I haven't tried. I like Kiss Slicer. I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've That's probably about the same length of time that I've tried that. You you should actually try Craftware. Oh my! Just I'll look. It like a month or two ago. Me and we're cocky. We're playing with it. I don't know. It was actually longer than that. It's probably six months ago. Um, it's actually gotten pretty good. Hmm. Believe it or not. I mean, it's still not mainstreamable. Well, well. Right. But I'll tell you what, I went in, hacked it on the Mac, and the Mac version is like four versions behind the Windows one. And where Cocky was even like, you know, it's pretty simple. It's pretty well laid out now. It's still got that candy land coloring. Right. So it's weird. <laughs> you know, it looks like you're playing a freaking two year old kid's game. But, uh, End of the thing, you slice it, it sliced, it loaded fast, it sliced reasonably fast, and the prints were freaking great coming out of it. Huh. You should, just for a joke, you should download it and do a video on it. You'd um, be surprised. I might. I'm going to have to check it out. They still default to their printers, but you, they, they're hackable now. All the settings are there, so once you load it, you just load one of their printers, and then you change everything. Yeah. Change all the sizes and everything. Same thing I used to do with Idea Maker when I first started. Like you make right. them in there four or five printers, and you hacked it to fit your printer. You didn't, you know, make a custom printer. Anyway, yeah. Um, who's print streaming? Um, doing the Taz uh, Lightspeed. Lightspeed's doing the Tasmanian Devil printer. Lowell's bot. <laughs> I keep calling it the Tasmanian Devil. <laughs> it's bright green. Anyway, what, what, what is it called? The Sidekick. Sidekick. Yeah, sidekicks. Is that what they're? Yeah, I they think that's what's going on. The little one that's like a mini, Prusa mini, and then the... The only thing I can't get is why everyone's still doing bed slingers. Really don't need to. I don't know, man. They suck. It's a thing. Bed droppers are the best. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be Core XY. Everyone's like, you have to be Core XY. And don't get me wrong, I love my Core XY. They're awesome. They're one of the better motion systems once you get it set. It is also one of the most difficult to get set and tuned. But even like the Creality Ender 5, I'll take an Ender 5 over, you know, a bed slinger any day of the week. Yeah. Any day of the week. Yeah. Flinging that bed around is just a bunch of wasted weight. Well, it's, you know, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot of drawbacks to it. I mean, it's uh, it's cheap. <laughs> it, it's legacy at this point. I mean, the people yeah. are just doing it to do it. Yeah. The the best part about it is, is it's been going so long that way that tuning to it is like everything is like pre-tuned to it. You can just like click on a slicer and go, that's my printer. <laughs> right. And it'll work. It, it, it may not be perfect, but it will work. 
which some of the other ones aren't so much anymore. Like the tool changer. The last time you fired up your tool changer? Uh, it's been a little while. You could have sent me the tool changer. <laughs> you know, that was going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm only like four grand in the hole on that one, so. Yeah, that ain't a cheap thing. Well, it, the good thing about that is E3D was never secretive about that. They always said right from the beginning, this is not your, you know, one hour build and, and go. They're always like, this is a test platform. <laughs> yeah, it, completely experimental. I mean, yeah. you, you had to know what you were getting yourself into on that one. Yeah, you really didn't even know what you were getting yourself into, did you? You know, honestly, I, the tool changer was one of those things. I thought the hardware was going to be a lot harder than it was. It actually went pretty well. It was the firmware and slicer tuning. Oh, my God. Yeah, tuning, I'd, see, that's where I wouldn't. I think I could build those things left and right. Yeah. And then I'd have to, like, send them to you to get them actually running. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It, here's the unit. Send it back to me with firmware and a slicer <laughs> profile, please. <laughs> Because I'm not going to get it. Uh, Firmware is not my thing. It's a nightmare, if, man. If you haven't noticed. Well, I can build anything out of sticks and lollipop, freaking, you know, whatever. <laughs> Duct tape and lollipop sticks. Bailing wire. Bailing wire. <laughs> whatever. But uh, when it comes to the magical, mystical, electronic, you know, firmware and even the slicers, even that, after a while, I'm just like, enough. It's good enough. I'm going with it. I know I can make it better, but I just don't have the energy or the time. Yeah, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Anyway, we're out. All right. You got crap to do and... We got crap to do, and everyone's got crap to do. So, right. y'all go do your own crap. That's right. Well, it's good to see you, Tom. Let me know how yeah, it goes. Good to see you, too, man. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. I'll, Anytime. Uh, thanks for the nightmare. Yeah, you are very welcome. <laughs> Later, folks. Uh, later. See you, everybody. <laughs>